What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out a weird one. This game is called High Fleet. You guys know that I have kind of like a weird soft spot for Screwfly style games. Things like Dead Knot and things like Fear Equation. Uh, games that are heavy analog and they focus on presentation and immersion over everything else, even if it comes at the expense of sort of like the gameplay. Because what I find is there's a rollover point there where sometimes your game is so immersive and so atmospheric that the player will stop treating the quirks of the game as though they're flaws in the game itself instead they'll just be like oh well it's a quirk with the ship that I'm flying or it's a it's a quirk with the fact that my ship is a heavy cruiser uh, in light of that if you had told me that this game you hadn't told me the developer of this game and just showed me a video of it I would have sworn up and down it was done by screwfly but in fact it wasn't uh, so anyways high fleet what is it this is a game where you are a carrier commander in a pseudo retro futuristic Russia that's fighting a war of empire effectively in like space Afghanistan that's the best way that I know how how to describe it. Uh, the goal is to maintain your campaign, maintain your finances, and fly your fleet around. The game is very, very immersive. It's got kind of a weird combat system that takes some getting used to, but once you get used to it, it's actually pretty good. So anyways, we're going to spend about 25 minutes with it here today. See if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list or otherwise pass on. If after watching this, you did want to get it for yourself, you can find a link to the game down below in the description. On top of that, you'll find my Discord, my Twitter, and my Twitch stream, where I'm live pretty much every single day of the week, just in case you wanted to ask about this game in person. So let's dive on in uh, this game. I am going to go ahead. I'm going to get rid of that progress right there. And we are going to play with the prologue on. The reason being is, is that like this game has a lot of moving parts because it is... A pretty heavy simulator in all honesty uh, learning to play this game is kind of like learning to play something like elite dangerous you got to get hands-on with it and you got to fiddle with it and there's a lot of mechanics and a lot of things happening on screen and there's enough of them that I'm just not going to be able to describe what's going on on the fly while still playing the game to an adequate level to show it off and the prologue will give us a storyline and actually a pretty good one uh, the game's tutorial is tied to the storyline and the storyline is pretty solid. You won't even really realize that you're in a tutorial. Uh, so anyways, the tutorial will explain all of the things that I won't have time to explain just through the dialogue. And then what I can do is I can focus on kind of the rougher bits and whatnot that may have got lost in translation. And kind of tell you how to play the game aside from that using it as a jump off point. Let's go. To Tarkin of the Third Task Force, on my order, proceed to Calhu at once and meet with Prince Elahu Fazil. By imperial decree, you are allowed to you are to represent the crown in talks with the prince, commander of the first squadron, Admiral Dowd. The great desert of Girat, an ancient kingdom, ruled over this land long ago until it was torn apart by strife and internecine war. The last king of Girat swore allegiance to the Romani Empire. This land seems to be doomed to bear the burden of war for all time. Seven years ago, an imperial official, the Lord Governor of Kiva, overthrew the king and declared a rebellion against the emperor's rule. And now our turn has come. We have arrived in Garat to end this once and for all. Uh, so yeah, dude, we're going to space Afghanistan because if there's one thing that history has taught us, uh, going to Afghanistan never has any long-term ramifications or consequences for any empire that steps foot there. Wake up, Tarkin. The city of Eli is on the horizon. Our long journey is finally behind us. Everybody is eager to hear you give order to land. Alright, so this is how you're going to be interfacing with pretty much the rest of the game. Uh, I'll talk about all these UI elements. They are all clickable. They are all interactable. Literally every single one of these buttons does something or lets you know some piece of information that you definitely need to know. I haven't fiddled around with missile control. I haven't gotten that far into the game, but I assume at some point our carrier gets like its own armaments and you can sort of like bombard things would be my guess. It looks like we've got some kind of torpedoes for inter-carrier combat. Uh, but anyways, I'll talk about this briefly. So on the bottom right, we have all the ships that are inside of our carrier group that are going to be launching from our platform. We have several Navarins, uh, which are basic gunships, and we have a Wanderer. Uh, the Navarins, they're alright. They're okay. I, I don't love them. They have like a big 100 millimeter cannon. Uh, this thrust thing right here makes us take off and like move and like land. It lets us determine like how fast we want to fly. Uh, you don't need to use any of this stuff. The remarkable thing about this game is that they've gone to the effort of adding all the UI elements, but if you don't want to interact with some of the more finicky analog instrumentation, you can just click on the map to get what you want and it'll just like autopilot it, which is good. It gives the heavy sim heads like the opportunity to do what they want to do with the UI, and then for people like me that are a little 
little bit more like middling about it and like meh can we just cut to the chase uh, we can just click on the map and so I like that variety that variety of choice that they've given the player uh, so this is our fuel range as of right now the yellow circle uh, this is Eli right here we can right click on it to give the order to land you'll see that it's given us a little bit of a chart effect right there uh, so we know it's going to be a tenth of an hour till we get there we can press the space bar to unpark and off we go do -do -do. I'm going into Eli, gonna get myself some awesome pie, because Eli's known for pie in the desert, yeah. Now as you can see, our altitude is dropping for right now. We're gonna see if we can make diplomatic contact with the prince, and see if we can bring him on into our little alliance. Uh, there you go, that's all, we're all nice and landed, and then we just hit this little lever right here to open up the bulkheads and go down to the surface. We need to take a ship to do that. Now, this is one of those things that I find to be a little bit repetitive. We've got to play Lunar Lander, effectively, which each of the ships that we want to land inside of Eli. Uh, landing the ships inside of Eli gives them a bonus to being repaired and also to being refitted. Uh, but you can also leave them on the ship and retrofit them that way. It's just going to take longer. So we'll take down the Wanderer real fast. And then we don't need to take any of the others because they don't have any damage. They don't need to be repaired. There's no problems. And so here is our landing mini game. Uh, use WASD to handle up, down, left, and right. I'm firing thrusters real fast. And we are going downwards. If you take a look at the little over map right there, you'll see a bunch of numbers on the platforms beneath us that we're trying to land on. Each of those platforms is going to give us a repair bonus if we can manage to land on it. I'm just going to keep kind of fanning the hammer on the engine for right now. I don't want to pick up too much velocity uh, because if you crash down, you definitely crash down. We've lost our preview, but that's okay because we're almost on the ground anyways. I'd like to rotate a little bit, so I'm going to use the Q keys to do that real fast and just add a little rotational vector to all this. We're going to go ahead and push left, and we want to bring this in nice and easy does it. And just kind of fan the W key a little bit, and we're in. There we go. Perfect. A stellar landing. Uh, there are going to be much more complicated areas that you're going to need to land in as time goes along. Things with lots of bumpy surfaces and whatnot. Uh, believe me when I say if you struggle with this game when you first start, I have endoed probably two dozen ships into the side of the planet before I finally got the hang of landing my ships. All right. I have... I have torn off a whole lot of landing gear. Uh, the humming of the pump drive suddenly dies down and the ship comes to a stop. You prepare to descend the ramp accompanied by a small group of officers and your personal guard. The uncertainty that awaits you outside fills you with unease. A small group of people are waiting patiently for you at the bottom of the ramp. Their leader is a dignified nobleman surrounded by bodyguards. So the Admiral sent you to talk to me, Tarkin. Yes, my name is Mark Sayadi, Grand Duke Sayadi. I see. Well, forgive my indiscretion, Grand Duke. I've never had the pleasure of meeting you before. Think nothing of it. I'm sure the two heirs to Alot's oldest monarchies will find something to talk about. He nods politely. I'd like to discover your involvement in the liberation of Girat. Liberation? We've been at war with the Gathering for seven years, and I still have yet to recover my father's throne. And now his Imperial Majesty's admirals mean to retake it in a single week? Hmm, perhaps they will. My people cannot match the strength of the gathering fleet. We have but a single corvette for each of their heavy cruisers. Yes, well, your people have fought bravely all these years. Aye, but even if, by the Almighty's mercy, the admirals land their ships in Kiva, what do you imagine will happen next? Well, it isn't up to me. You're honest, if nothing else. I will help you meet with the Tarkins of Girat. Perhaps some of them may become your allies in this war. The Tarkin of Kalhu is a good friend of mine. If you can come to an understanding with him, I'm confident he will be a worthy ally. Well, allies are what we need right now. It is a shame that we've been forced to meet in such troubled times, Duke. Well, the fleet has never had anything but troubled times. Indeed. All right, so here we are. Uh, this is the landing area. Once we get further on into the game, there will be refitting areas where you can build your ships and customize them. Uh, there's a supply depot for right now. We need to get some fuel. It'll give you a preview on this side of how far you can fly on the fuel load that you've decided to take on board. And then we'll back on out. We'll go back to the ship. And we actually just need to wait it out. That's pretty much it. So are we heading to Calhu for now? Yes, we'll depart when we're ready. We've got the fuel, so it'll be some time before our ships are done refueling. Very well, we'll wait. Uh, we can press the shift to speed up kind of the refueling process, so that's what we did right there. The ships are done refueling and we're ready to fly. What are your orders? I uh, give the order to take off. I'll choose our destination. Alright, so... 
we're going to go to, I think, Shimri is where we want to go, although it looks like this is a hostile location. You can also tell, you can always tell a hostile location because it'll get a red radar ring around it when you're on the approach. And so right there, you can see that red radar ring. And so we'll need to watch out on our way over here. Pretty good chance we're going to have enemy contact. So it's going to take us five hours to arrive. I'm going to go ahead and unpause the game. And you will see that we'll gain altitude. The turbines are spinning up. Thrust has been put up to full. And we are on our way. I'm on my way. I don't know where I'm going. I'm on my way. There we go. Off to Shimmery. Oh, we have contact. Okay. So enemies are here and they're intercepting us. Game's pretty simple. Uh, WASD, click to shoot. But this it's basically like Lunar Lander with combat. Like, it's kind of hard to describe because we're in low orbit fighting with enemies. And so, like, we're not even in low orbit. I think we're, like, in low atmo. And so there is gravity to deal with as well. But I'll explain it as we go. Here's the ship lineup. The enemy has three courageous attack corvettes. We have three Navarins and a Wanderer. I think this guy right here... Oh, he has the same cannons that everybody else has. Okay, I thought maybe he had machine guns. Sometimes I find that the machine guns are a little bit easier to aim and, like, lead and make work. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and exit on out, and here's our first combat. The enemy's around here somewhere. There he is. All right, well, let's put something off in his direction. I'm going to let him have it real fast before we get lined up on. One thing you want to be especially careful about. So, I'm going to pause it for a second. We have a couple of things to keep track of here. Bottom left, this is our ship. Every single one of these little gray and blue areas, these are actual modules that can actually be destroyed and knocked off your ship. Uh, so in this case, on the back end right here, we've got fuel canisters, we've got fuel canisters, we've got fuel canisters, those are little blue things. Our guns are right there and right there. Later on, we'll have missiles on the side. There are critical hits. If the enemy fires and hits your missile on the side, it can blow up and like knock off the side of your ship. If they hit your fuel tanks, it can catch fire and set the ship aflame. And then you've got to use fire suppression systems. I mean, the game gets complicated. And then this guy right here, I think, is the target that we currently have locked. Up in the top left, you've got our ammunition. This is going to slowly refill based on the amount of crew that we have on board. If the crew on this ship in this Corvette are understaffed, they'll reload slower. Your turning and your agility will be worse. Uh, as they die in combat and whatnot, you'll definitely notice a performance change. But anyways, let's get back to it. we got a job to do out here. Oh, it's behind him. Okay, nice little volley right there. I am getting peppered, though. Come on, die for me, baby. There he is. We got him. All right, so retreating. Uh, in most games, retreat sort of implies that you're losing the game. In this game... Retreating is 100% necessary because every single battle, for whatever reason, I don't know if they did this just for difficulty's sake or if they did this for immersion's sake, but you can only ever have one ship in combat at a time from what I've seen so far. I've played for an hour or so, and it's always one of my ships against like six or seven of their ships, you know what I mean? And so retreating in this game is vital. Your ships tend to have a little bit better of a chin on them because they're official Imperial vessels and these guys are like rebels with cobbled together ships. However, that being said, you are going to get chewed on and there are different strategies for your ships. And so like when you want to retreat, it'll give you a location where you can retreat to. I'm trying to like burst these guys out. You see that retreat to the bottom left? Uh, when we want to retire this ship and bring in the next ship from our roster, that little retreat area is how we do it. Okay, so we're on fire. That means we're going to have to use our FSS. He's a little chewed on. He's down. Okay, so we killed him. Uh, our ship is looking a little rough. I like to take little tester shots before I do the full volley, just to make sure that I'm putting shots on target. He's lost control of his ship, and he is now officially down. And we are victorious. So there you go. We have defeated the enemy. And so now for it's time for us to make landfall. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm glad we only had to use one ship because that means I only need to land one ship. Oh, I don't only need to land one ship. So that's good. Nice. Apparently that battle was a freebie. We didn't actually take damage. Hell yeah. Uh, we will land the Wanderer again. I find that the Wanderer controls a little bit better. I love the little effects in this game like the water on the landing camera and whatnot. Uh, I think I'm going to cut us a little bit to the left. I'm going to need to give us a little bit of rotational energy to come in flat. All right, a little bit more thrust and take it down below. All right, there we go. 
And I don't know if I got that one in time. Oof, close one. There we go. We're all good. Perfect landing. Tarkin, sir, we have the opportunity to replenish missiles on all of our ships, and I highly recommend that we do so. All right, so this is going to be the first place where they allow you to actually retrofit your ships. Uh, so we've got our squadron up at the top, and then we can scroll down to go to the maintenance panel, which is down here. We can buy the missile, and then we can just slap it onto our ship right there. And that's pretty much how it works. We have, like, concrete hard points where these missiles go. And so I'm going to throw missiles on pretty much everything, because in this game, missiles are deadly as hell. Uh, if you get hit by a missile, it is bad news bears. Uh, it is going to light a fire. It is going to it's going to knock off a module. If that module controls like your rotation, or it controls your thrust, or it controls your inertial dampening, or whatever else, dude, it is a massive problem. Uh, we can go on over to the Navarin now. We're going to throw missiles onto pretty much everything. I'm a big fan of missiles. The first thing I do, these missiles are heat seeking, so the first thing I do anytime a ship enters a battlefield is I just launch my entire salvo. That's pretty much it. I don't wait for like a perfect moment. I just launch my entire salvo, and then they waste all their chaffs, they waste all their flares, and then when my next ship comes in, they're basically sitting ducks, and I can just pelt them repeatedly with as many missiles as I can possibly put out. Let's go ahead and exit from here. We've gone ahead and retrofitted all of our ships. We are going to need to resupply, so we'll go ahead and grab, I guess, a little bit of fuel right here. Yeah, that seems okay. Tarkin, sir. I've just reported our progress to the Admiral. He is satisfied. Well, the Admiral treats me like a clueless child. He seems to have forgotten that I'm the son of his liege, the Emperor. The capital is far away. Until we return, Admiral Dowd is the one in command. He's going to be leading the squadron, and you, Duke, are a Tarkin in his squadron. Well, we'll depart as soon as we're ready. Okay, so we're refueling for right now, so there's not really a whole lot to be concerned about right there. We've got about three and a half hours until the fuel is ready to go. And there it is. I love the little effects like the clouds going over the landscape on the map down here. Absolutely great with the satellite imaging. The, the squadron is done refueling and we're ready to go. Okay, so our destination, I think, is going to be Calhu. That's where they want us to go. They want us to go to Calhu and meet with the Tarkin. Let's do it. Grand Duke, if we take off now, you won't be able to repair the ships in full. Okay, belay that order. Oh, I guess it's auto-repairing my ships for me. Nice. Okay. It didn't say that I had any reported damage. Otherwise, I would have landed the ship and taken care of it. Uh, what else we got going on here? Off the cow hill. I'm going to jam radar real fast because we're going through radar right here. I don't know if it matters this early in the game, but it's a mechanic that will matter later. We've got another fight. Uh, so they want us to play around with afterburners. Uh, afterburners right here, they're going to allow us to go a little bit faster and get out of the way of stuff that's going to hit us. Enemy air defense spotted. Focus on the enemy ships. We're going to capture the ground vehicles once the battle's over. And watch out for missiles. All right, so we'll go ahead and throw the Wanderer in first because he's got a little bit more of a chin on him by comparison to the enemy. Uh, we can launch missiles like so. I'm going to fire two missiles right there. Hopefully they impact. Okay, the kill is confirmed. We've got a missile incoming for right now. I'm going to launch flares with the F key. Uh, that's going to go ahead and run off some of that missile damage. Yeah, that's what I like to see. Get him with that good stuff. Uh-huh. Get rid of the entire fusillade. Fire some more missiles. I don't care who they go after. There's a kill right there. Let him fly on into it. I don't have any missiles left. and give me some thrust to dodge that missile right there. Ah, I missed. Oh, cool. That little tiny bit that scuffed his wing on one side was actually what took him out. Very nice. I'll absolutely take that. Okay. So we are now officially here in Calhu as a diplomatic attaché. Uh, we got a little bit of damage on the Wander, so I'll take it in. We didn't actually lose any parts, though. Sometimes landing a ship that's lost its landing gear can be a massive headache. I know. Giant surprise and spoiler alert there. I can't see where the dam right now. I don't know if I'm rotated properly. I'm going to have to fly by instrumentation here, I think. All right, take me in. 
We're gonna go for the spot that says 50 right there. Although I honestly can't tell you if it's gonna be successful. Okay, stabilize. Come on, get me in there, baby. Get me in there. Sweet ass landing. Get me in there. Perfect. Could not have gone better, dude. I'm a professional. I know what I'm doing. There's nothing terrible that could ever happen if you give me control of a massive frigate. What a stunning dogfight, Duke. Were you aware of the hostile anti-air defenses in Calhu prints? No, I was not. The Tarkin is expecting you, though, Duke. Indeed, there's a delegation awaiting you by your ship. Imlan Harish. Uh, in the name of the Empire, I welcome you. Okay, so apparently he's a Romani loyalist, so we know that about him. This is kind of a talking mini-game, and this is how you pick up new ships and new pilots to join your cause. Uh, you're going to be talking to them, you're going to be kind of like exchanging small talk, and it's almost like a turn-based, dialogue-based combat, in all honesty. I'm looking for allies to wage war on Kiva. Will you join us? So there it is. Now. We've got to decide what we want to do with some of these cards down here. Uh, we can appeal to justice to undermine the strong... Oh, the weak appeal to justice. We can talk about how great the future will be that awaits all the peoples of Girat. Or we can use a speech on the decline of the Romani Empire. Well, we know that he likes Romanes, which is us. So let's do this one right here. Awesome. So he is proud of his country. We now know that about him. Uh, let's see here. We can talk of the war with Kiva and why is necessary. We'll go for that. He has a respect for forcefulness. Okay, so we're learning things about this guy. Uh, let's see here. Our deep sense of respect for the Tarkon. He is very, very afraid of me for whatever reason. Okay. All right. We'll talk about how Sayadi is a good friend and a fearsome foe. He's now very afraid of us. All right, I'll take that. Uh, we can give him gifts in order to stretch out these turns right here. So that'll give us an extra turn right there. And that'll give us an extra turn right there. Now, let's see here. The weak appeal to justice to undermine the strong. He loves justice. Oh, we messed up. He doesn't like that. Uh, the injustice throughout Girat. He likes order. Okay, sounds good. And then... The untold riches that await the victor in Girat. Very nice. Ooh, that was a banger right there. We got a bunch of points for that. So what have you decided? Will you join us? I want to meet the other Tarkin. Or I will join you gladly, Grand Duke. I wish to meet the other Tarkins. Where can I find them? There aren't many Tarkins around here, Duke. I've never heard of any. Okay, well, I appreciate it. So, a character has joined us, and we should get his ship as well, his Gladiator, which is actually pretty strong. It's a pretty good ship, and we got 6,000 gold in funding. Uh, Tarkin, sir, some of our ship are in need of repair, and the city has a shipyard. We should repair them now. I don't know if it, like, automatically damages your ships. I don't think we took any damage. I mean, I think our Wanderer got, like, a little bit scuffed, but, like, I don't think it matters. Either way, we can repair it right here, and it can ask how much you want to repair it. It's only going to cost us like 200 bucks. We honestly, we almost flawless that fight, so I'm not that worried about it. With the Gladiator, can I slap some missiles on this big boy? Like, what can I... Do I have any mounting hard points right here? So I've got a reinforced hull on that side, reinforced hull on that side. Uh, you can use all these parts to build custom ships if you want. I did want to show off the shipyard menu. I tend to use a lot of defaults and then just like retrofit the weapons and whatnot. That's how I play games. I'm not a huge fiddler. Like, I don't like the fiddly diddly with stuff a whole lot. I tend to just go with, like, the pre-builds or whatever. Unless it's, like, a massive increase in efficiency for me to fiddle with stuff. Especially since this game has so many things that can, like, go wrong if you build your ship wrong. Like, I just, I'd rather not take the chance. I know that it's working right now, and I would rather not uh, go and make it worse. Uh, but you can buy different hull parts right here. You can reinforce different areas. So if I wanted to, I could throw a hull part, like, on the front and kind of customize how this looks a little bit. Uh, I could throw things around in other slots and sort of make it look a little bit better or like pad out areas where I feel like I have a weakness uh, and then that little reinforced area would help out with any damage we might be taking. Uh, you can sell it back if it turns out that you don't really want it. 
But anyways, I, I kind of like the idea of having a reinforced hull block right there just to act as like a baffle if they're firing from an angle so that they don't strafe both of my engines simultaneously. The most they can ever hit when firing from below me is one of my engines. If I put a block right there, the block will stop the bullets from moving across and hitting that and divert it towards the landing gear. I think that might be an okay idea. Yeah, we'll slap that guy in right there. We'll give him like a little spaceship butt plug. It'll work out. All right. Everything is repairing. The ship works as ship working. Uh, we can buy some more fuel here right now if we wanted to. How far are we from our nearest destination? Let me see real fast on the charts. So our nearest destination. Oh, we got a transmission from Dowd. To Tarkin of Third Task Force. My order seize the city of Melka and await our main forces there. Admiral Dowd. It seems Dowd is reluctant to assault Melka with the bulk of his forces. He's sending us ahead in case they have anti-air defenses ready. Well, this is our chance to get into the thick of things. So we're going to refuel and go for Melka? Affirmative. Alright, so Melka... Well, I guess we're just really, really low on fuel. I guess I'll, I'll go back and take care of that. I thought we had more fuel than we actively have, but... Apparently I can sell my fuel too, but I don't really want to sell my fuel. Uh, we got to wait for the refueling effort to happen for right now. Once we get back up to 100%, we should be able to make a move over to Melka. So there is Melka. We'll plot a course, and then we should be up and into the sky. We're not paused right now. Looking good. we got some kind of alarm going off. Why is there an alarm going off? I'm not in love with the fact that there's an alarm. Ah, we have enemies over here. Good. Time for another dogfight. Uh, we've got volley fire, so we can allow the full charge up, then fire. And it increases our chance to hit the enemy. You can concentrate on maneuvering while reloading is in product. Eh, I kind of prefer to do both at the same time, but like I get what you're saying. We'll go over to the Wanderer real fast because it has a big missile salvo. And that's what I want to open with. Uh, so we're going to go downwards, and we are going to launch a missile first and foremost. Or maybe we're not. Oh, I can shoot down their little cannonballs right there. Okay. Uh, that guy's below us, which is like seven different flavors of terrible. But he fired a missile at us, which is good because it missed. It wasn't a hittle. It was definitely a missile. Yeah, I think I'll just... Uh, yeah, okay. Well, took a little scuffing right there. That enemy definitely took one in return, though. Man, is he dead yet? I would really like for him to be dead. Oh, and we're hit with a missile. Okay, so let's go ahead and retreat him. That's going to bring our next ship on in. We're going to fire a missile right at the beginning, see what we can hit with it. It looks like we got that guy right there. Fire another missile. Put some cannons on him. Oh, he's dead. Never mind. That missile was a waste. And he missed his entire fusillade right there. I'm also missing, like, everything. I'm going to put out flares. And that's a miss. Eh, one little hit right there. Nothing too spectacular. A couple of hits off that fusillade. Okay. I'm going to have to wait to reload here. Hey, there's a nice little hit from the cannon. Oh, but his was better. Hey, there was a nice little set of hits. And we're hit. We'll activate the fire suppression system with the B key. Ooh, that was a nice little hit right there. Come on, man. Come on, man. Well, we hit him with one little cannonball right there. I keep leading too far. I gotta get better at this. There we go, and he's down. It's a good thing we're not getting more missiles shot at us. That was going badly pretty quickly. But yeah, dude, this is High Fleet. I think this game is pretty cool. I haven't decided if it's for me yet, but there's no denying that this is a really high quality game. Everything about it from the UI design to the sound design feels satisfying, has a nice analog clunk to it of like chains and gears and levers tripping and like everything in this game just feels and looks so good from the combat to just general map play and like it's difficult to make a game feel good inside the actual map itself, but they've managed to pull it off. 
So this is High Fleet. I highly recommend you check it out if you're into these sorts of games. If you like to customize fleets and play around with things, it seems like a pretty solid game. The only warning that I would have is that I got like further on into the game and I seem to have soft locked myself on accident without like actively realizing it. And so anyway, sometimes the UI, so like there will come a point in this game, spoiler alert, where you're done with the tutorial and you start basically from scratch and that's where you begin the real campaign. The tutorial, probably about 45 minutes to an hour long. It's full of story. You get to do lots of combat. So actually, I think this game has a, a tutorial the way it should be designed. Uh, but anyways, and it's going to ask you to buy ships, and it's going to dispense of your entire fleet that you used inside the tutorial. But it doesn't warn you that the money that you have left over after buying your fleets is actually for, like, the campaign, as far as I could tell. Or maybe I just wasn't paying attention very well. And so anyways, I soft-locked myself, and I had to, like, reload a save in order to buy my ships on over again. So this is definitely kind of one of those old 90s-style analog machinery sort of difficult games that doesn't really hold your hand a lot of the time with regards to kind of how the game is unfolding. So keep an eye out for stuff like that. But aside from that, I don't really have any complaints about it. I think this is a remarkably polished, uh, well-designed game, and I'll see y'all next time. My name is Flattercat. I sift through the pile of found what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today it was High Fleet. Tomorrow it will be something else. Bye-bye, everybody.